This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we're going to have a little bit of uh, fact or fiction, maybe a check-in from the uh, Good Guys Car Shows going on this morning. Maybe. Maybe be back next week. So, if you don't have anything going on, you ought to be checking out the Good Guys Car Show. Anyhow, if you've got car questions, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411-923. Matt, based off of our conversation with Bree after the show last week, I thought we should talk about noises. Good idea, right? <laughs> what she described to us when we were walking out the door with her keys to go check the noises in her car, and what well, we found were two different things. Should we ask Bree? Bree, you want to try and tell us, Bree, what you told us, not what you know now, with the benefit of hindsight, but tell us about the noise that you asked Dave and I to go listen for. Are you ready, Bree? She's almost ready. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't expecting this. We're putting her on the spot. Yeah, well, I kind of had to, like, grab the mic, which is super far away, and I'm only, like, five foot, so, you know, <laughs> had to get a box. That way I could I could grab the mic. Anyways, um, the sound that I was describing or that I was hearing initially before you guys kind of went in there is like, well, it's around 20, 30 miles an hour. It's just kind of like... A grinding noise. Um, in fourth gear or something like that? Yeah, I'm like, I think it's in third or fourth because I, I see the RPMs go up and down, so that means it's changing gears, right? I don't know. This is That's kind of what I gave you to work off right. of because that's the best I had. Perfect. So now Dave and I, so we, fast, we go back, and Dave and I are now going, we're talking on the way down in the elevator, and we're thinking, okay, maybe it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's a manual we're transmission, manual grinding transmission. in the fourth gear. Is it, is it grinding <laughs> in the fourth gear? That's the track my mind went down. <laughs> and Dave and I both go get in the car and I'm like, hmm, it's an automatic. <laughs> so <laughs> now we go for this drive. So the way she describes the noise, and Dave and I are driving, and you're like, do you hear that, Matt? I'm like, well, hear what? I, I hear lots of things. I hear, sounds like some tires are kind of, you know, we're talking about a Toyota pickup. It's four-wheel drive, so the tires are a little bit more aggressive than your passenger car tire. I'm thinking, well, I hear a little bit of noise, and you're like, Dave says, well, I feel the 2-3 shift, and it's in fourth gear now, you know, so then we stop, like, in the middle of the road on 16th Street, I remember there's no traffic, and we gently go through the gears again, determine the transmission's working okay, right? Yeah, and then we cross that off, and, and I thought, you know what, and we did find we did find a noise, but it was I don't think it was a noise that Bree hey. was referring to. Well, the dash. <laughs> you know, cars have a lot of noises. I thought, you, I thought you were going to say eight noises, not a, a noise. A noise. And you're thinking tires, tires, tires. And I go, I don't know. I'm hearing bearing. Very subtle bearing. And so we started doing this, like, swerving thing. If Bree knew how we were driving her car down 16th Street. Well, that jump you took is what I was really surprised. <laughs> oh, that God. There more noises. <laughs> well, how did you find the problem, I guess? <laughs> we didn't have our helmets or our driving mitts, so I kept it to a minimum. But, you know, I heard the left front wheel bearing making noise. After some time, though, because we were yeah. going through, and then and then we're hearing this rattle in the dash. So I'm holding the dash going, okay, is that it? And then some chains rattling in the ashtray. Right. So, so it, I mean, those noises can be very challenging. And, and Matt's uh, a chatterbox. And I'm like, just be quiet so I can listen <laughs> for the noise, right? Right. You're like, can you zen out for just, yeah, just a second? <laughs> just chill for me for a second. So, so Brie call, we talked. I had to run out. So we talked on the phone, and, and I told her what I thought it was. And then we came. I came back today, and I said, hey, you know, we got to go drive it together because I need to hear what noise you're hearing. And so that's the thing about noises. And do you have a noise in your car right now that you've been ignoring for, like, three weeks? How long had you been hearing that noise, Brie, before you decided to confess? Uh, Probably about a month. Yeah. See, but and that is such a very subtle, subtle well, noise. But I, I think... kept, I kept questioning myself. Like, am I really hearing this? Because it was intermittent. So mm-hmm. I was thinking, well, if I can't make the sound go again, how is the mechanic going to do it? Right. Well, now exactly. What? And then, in in the thing is, when you've been driving that car, some of those other noises, the change in the ashtray and that little dash rattle and stuff, 
those all become white noise and you don't hear those. Now you hear the new noise starting to come in. And, and as subtle as that noise is, right. it's still something. I mean, the car's talking to you. I mean, that's, you know, when, you're, when your elbow hurts or your, your, your back is sore, that's your body telling you there's something wrong. And when the car starts to make noises that it shouldn't be making, that's the car in its way talking to you saying, hey, I'm, right. <laughs> something might be happening. There's something going on here. So we, we need to look at that because sometimes the noise is really no big deal. Maybe it's, hey, we find stuff rolling around in the trunk. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, all kinds of different things. We find that actually there's nothing wrong with the car, but it could have been. And then we hear people with noises, oh, that thing's been ticking forever. Don't worry about it. But then they come in with a blown up engine. Well, and I think that's typical. That so happened Br- in my first truck. <laughs> right? So Bree had a noise going, and it was so subtle that she didn't want to, She, I don't want to go trouble the mechanic with it because he's going to go drive it and drive it and not, not hear anything. So, you know, and, and sometimes you could wait to maybe see if it gets a little worse. I like people to kind of develop a pattern in their mind. So if you're starting to hear a noise, when do you hear it? So when uh-huh. Bree and I were talking today... It didn't we sounded like we, all of a sudden we had a different noise than the noise we heard in the wheel bearing because she said, well, I hear it sometimes in the drive through So I'm sitting in the drive through and I said, okay, does it speed up or slow down with the engine? She wasn't really quite sure. I said, what if you turn the air condition off? Well, she says, well, it goes away when I turn the air condition off. Hey, hey, you know, maybe we got something going on with the AC compressor. You know, and so I start, I start going down that path. So you can, if you've got a noise in your car and it's real subtle and you're not ready to trouble your mechanic with it, I wouldn't say ignore it. I would say pay it. Pay more attention to it. Document. What, I, what you're saying, Dave, is have a notepad or your, your phone with a voice recorder or something, and you want to learn what are the traffic conditions. Did I just – you know, because we're going to ask you these questions at the counter, and these usually start to evolve. I mean, there's not just this, this checklist that we have. Depending on how you answer, we're going to start mm. asking more questions. We, you know, is it related to – so just write it down. Was the car cold? And now cold, you can have a cold car in the summertime, okay? When we say cold, we're talking about initial startup or or having been able to cool down to ambient temperature is is cold. So does it happen cold or does it happen on a hot restart? Does it happen under braking or or heavier traffic or was the car already warmed up? I mean, there's all kinds. You should take those notes because that is going to help. Again, does it, does it happen pattern? when you hit the brakes? Does it right. happen when you're accelerating? Does it happen when you're decelerating, when mm-hmm. you're coasting? I mean, all those things. So get a pattern, and then when you go to the mechanic, you're going to kind of you're going to kind of have an idea what conditions you need to put it in to show it to him. You know, when when the time comes. And the key when you have a noise is to go for a ride with a mechanic because we will a lot of times fix the wrong noise. You're like, oh, it's you know, and I have fixed the wrong noise on a car. There's some noise I jump in a car. I'm like, wow, you know. And, and I tell them, hey, you got a differential bearing going bad. We fix it. And they come pick the car up and they go, oh, no, that's made noise for years. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> I wasn't me. worried about that I wasn't one. worried. Yeah. It's this one over here. And I'm like, oh, man, I've seen, that. I've seen that happen. So when you have a noise, it's not a bad idea. And I, I would almost insist upon it. Can I show you, Mr. Service Rider or Mr. Technician, come jump in the car so I can show you which noise I'm talking about. Bob McClay, who works here, he was down getting his car service, and he definitely had a noise, and they sold him an exhaust manifold because his was cracked, but it wasn't the transmission noise that was happening because the planetary gears were coming apart. Two noises, but not what he was expecting. One, he's like, ah, you know, it's just an old car. It's going to have a little bit of an exhaust leak. He didn't mind that. Right. So, But it was was a problem. And that's where I think people also sell themselves short. Oh, it's an old car. Well, that car wasn't old. It was 10, 8, 10 years old. Yeah. And at the point where you just give up on your car and say, ah, don't worry about the exhaust leak. And then it's the next, ah, don't worry about that. Now your car's suddenly falling apart. You're doing yourself driving a, yourself a jalopy. A, a dis, disservice. But back to some of the noises, we're going to, at the counter, I mean, there's a lot of questions. Are we turning the steering wheel? Does, is the noise relative to the speed of the vehicle, the road speed, or the engine speed? Could you rev it? In neutral and have it duplicate the noise, you know, or, hey, sometimes on our test drives, Dave, what do we do? We're going 60 miles an hour down the freeway. What do we reach and shut the thing off and just see what does this thing <laughs> sound like? Is it when it's coasting? Is it in the It always scares customers when I turn the car off going 70 miles an hour. Like, what especially is this when guy you, doing? Especially when you hand him the keys. What, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? So, so, but I was thinking of some of the categories of noises. So I am listening for a noise. The other thing is, where in the car is it coming from? There's kind of an underhood type of noise, which is up toward the front of the car. You might hear it up there. You might, in your mind, picture it. You know, well, that's coming from the right rear of the car. So kind of see. But we have underhood noises. Those are going to be things like belts and, you know, hoses and engine noises, clattering. 
Uh, then there's suspension type noises, the noises you hear when you go over speed bumps, Creaks and stuff. or the wheel bearing type noises. That r- kind of it's kind of a rough, growly type noise. It gets oh, worse oh, with road speed, and that's what Brie had going on. Noise. But I don't think she was picking up on that one yet. You know I'm what just, the you know what the fun thing to do is? <laughs> I love it at the counter you know, when you get the the customer. Okay, can you make noise for me? <laughs> we we do it on the show once in a while, and I, it's so funny to watch the people give their their interpretation of the noise, and and uh, you know you hear all kinds of, you see faces, and they're twisting their arm a different way, and make trying to trying to duplicate the noise, but it's helpful. I mean, oh, it's way helpful. I had this big muscle bound guy come in my shop the other day, and his shirt was real tight, and looked fitted on him. I said, I got the same shirt, but it doesn't look like that. <laughs> but I made him make the noise, you know, and he was making Whee! a little yeah. <laughs> Well, and the other thing, too, is, again, we were saying that the car is telling you something. It's talking to you about what, what's happening. Um, don't ignore it because a little noise can get expensive. I mean, sometimes the noise, you know, like a wheel very noise. If it starts today or goes for three more weeks, it probably isn't more expensive, although it can tear up an axle and some things like that. But there are other noises. You get a growling noise. Maybe you have a water pump going bad. Now you have a catastrophic failure, and now you've cost yourself an yeah, engine. Yep. So you... You really don't want to noise it. So, you know, is your car talking to you? And if it is, call us, 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. I don't think we can get noises by text, but if you want to text us, you can do that at 411-923 with your questions, and, and we will work through those with you. It doesn't have to be about a noise. Whatever is going on with your car, we are here to help you. We'll be right back. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. The good guys are back with the 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th to the 20th. Come on out and enjoy three huge days of hot rod and fun, featuring over 3,000 classic hot rods, muscle cars, trucks, and customs on display. Visit vendor exhibit, shop the swap meet, and cars for sale corral, and enjoy free fun stuff for the kids. And don't miss your chance to experience the earth shaken Nitro Thunderfest Dragster Exhibition. And see the good guys' top 12 cars and trucks of the year presented by Meguiar's up close and in person. For tickets and details, visit goodcashguys.com. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR Car Guys here to help you with your car. So give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411-923. Matt, and I think of noises, I was thinking of really the three categories. So there's kind of the engine, the underhood noise. Maybe everybody's familiar with that belt squeak in the morning type of noise. There's suspension noises. It's kind of like the squeaky mattress kind of noises. <laughs> and then there's uh, <laughs> there's air noises, so wind noises. So tires are what I consider kind of an air noise. You're going to hear it. You know, they get louder as you go down the road. And tires make noise when they're rolling over the pavement. So if you shut the car off and all you could hear was a rolling car, it, it'd be kind of noisy. And so whistling, you know, aerodynamic type noises. 
You know, I've heard cars where they have antennas for the CB or something, and it whistles going down the road, and it sounds just like a wheel bearing. Well, remember, you know, remember when the Dodge Ram came out with that first new design truck? Oh, it yeah. looked like the Mack truck, like in the mid 90s, I think, yep. around 95, 96, somewhere in that era. They All their commercials, I don't know if you remember, they had the wind tunnel. Yep. And the truck's in the wind tunnel, and it's making this noise. And they come over, and they slide, they change out the antenna. And the guy would say, we don't let our trucks whistle while they work. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing, and the noise went away. All, I mean, you just think about all the different things that can create a noise that you didn't have. You start talking about wind noise. We didn't even talk about this before the show. You hear, start hearing these noises. And this is, again, why we have to ask all these questions. We had a wind noise not that long ago. We can't we're just racking our brains and we've got some special equipment to find noises where it transmits a noise and we've got a receiver outside the car ended up being that the windshield had been recently replaced and they didn't put enough silicone oh, and there was yeah. some air coming through there which if it would have gone much longer then it would have been water and a whole nother set of oh yeah whole nother set of problems but it's amazing on the things that can cause noises with just normal wear and tear in the car and then there's all kinds of new noises now I mean not new noises same noise but I mean, you think you got a belt squealing under the hood, and we've had a handful of these. I mean, we've had cars that have been to other shops. They've had belts, and they've warrantied the belts. They've put tensioners on and warrantied the tensioners, and you'd swear on your life that the belt is squealing, but we're seeing PCV systems fail in these cars, and oh, they're sucking whistling. air past the, you know, past the crankcase seal or something like that. It's <laughs> weird stuff. All Not the things so we, easy. Noises can be can be one of those deals. And one of the things that you mentioned that I want to get to, and then we got some phone calls we got to get to, and a few open lines at 602-277-5827, is the uh, – uh, I always ask people, have you had anything fixed in the car in the last 30 days? And they go, no. you got to think about it a little harder. Have you – you know, oil change, windshield. You know, well, I just had a windshield replaced. That would have saved you guys a bunch of time because you would just go snoop around the windshield to make sure everything was done right. You can save yourself time and money uh, if if you give a good answer to that question at the auto shop. If there's anything you just had done, or I've had someone say, you know, I just got some new wheels and tires on the car. Okay. Well, we're looking for a vibration problem. Maybe something didn't go right with that whole All deal. All that stuff that you think we don't need to know, <laughs> we or, need to know. And I say, you know, like a new car stereo, you know, anything like that. Oh, yeah, I did get a new car stereo. Well, that means somebody's been into the electrical and the dashboard, and we may start go looking there, mm -hmm. see what's going on. Anyhow, let's go with Lana in Phoenix on a 2004 Jeep Wrangler. How can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, hi. Yes, I was calling because... Um, I'm kind of like when you started out with the story, I, I haven't really taken it in because it only happens once in a while, and it's kind of like a wee that happens, and, and it I can't figure it out where, like, I try to make it happen, and I can't make it reproduce it, okay. and it's coming from under the hood. It sounds like a really high-pitched whistle. It'll happen. It doesn't matter whether the air conditioner is off or on. Um, and it mostly happens, I thought it would happen in the morning. I thought I would be doing it right now. And I could say, listen, listen, that's it. But I haven't been able to catch it to show somebody the sound. Um, it'll start in the morning when it's cold. Sometimes it'll whistle. I call it a whistle. Is it a stick uh, shift or automatic? Stick shift, yeah. Stick, stick shift. shift. Does it change at all when you put your foot on the clutch? Um, no, it, well, I mean, it can, it has happened at times when, when that clutch, when we're, when I'm moving, but it'll happen even if I'm idling, sitting still, mm -hmm. or if we're driving. And sometimes it seems to be more common when I'm driving and then like you coast, then you can hear it. It'll like, you'll, it'll start and it'll get louder and then it'll just fade away on its own. It's like once everything gets hot and been running for a while most of the time it doesn't whistle then that's interesting i mean dave and i probably are sitting here listening we have two different ideas i wasn't even going to ask about manual or automatic because you start thinking maybe a throw up bearing but the way she's describing it i'm kind of thinking maybe a vacuum leak you know the engine is a vacuum pump so mm -hmm. it's sucking making a lot of vacuum when she lets off the gas lets off the gas maybe on a cold start there's there's vacuum being transferred in different ways so, Lana, that's some of the, you know, you just have to, you, you gave us great information, and, and that's the kind of information you're going to want to take to the service advisor or to the technician when you, uh, 
you know, when you take it in and you've done a good job, and I would still suggest maybe get a little notepad and 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 keeping track of, and then if, if you can get it to do it consistently, just do little things. Like if it's doing it, just put some light pedal on the clutch, light, light pressure on the clutch pedal. And if it changes, then we know we, maybe we have a pilot bearing or a throw-out bearing issue or something like that. Um, yeah, and I, was, I, was, I was thinking of that. And then the other thing, uh, you know, I was uh, totally lost my train of thought. But we have something called an event log. When somebody's got an issue that's just rare, and we just it's a clipboard, we give them a pencil, and we say every time it does it, Fill this out, and it's stuff they can circle. How fast were you going? You know, what was the speed of the engine when you heard the noise, or when you had this happen? And just go through those type of things and have have that. That's that's good information. But Bree was looking for a video that she had on her phone. So Lana, take a video when it does it, and see if that helps. You can show that to the mechanic. Go, hey, here, here's what it looked like. <laughs> I don't I don't know what noises look like though, Dave. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll pick on you in that. But hey, we were listening to this uh, deal on the website. It said, "Hey, listen to your noise here, and then take it to your mechanic." And Dave and I are testing each other. <laughs> That's when the benefit of visual and audio helps because we like there was one that was a vacuum leak, and all you hear is this engine running. Yeah. Now, no, there was no way to pick it up. If you're standing there psychologically and you're looking at it, you can. We can get rid of that noise. Our, we block that out because we know that's normal. But just listening to an audio recording, it, it wasn't helpful. So, well, we've got uh, Laura in Chandler. She's got a 2005 Chevy Tahoe. How can we help you, Laura? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Okay, this is my issue. Since August, on occasion, when I go to start the car, it does nothing. The bells, the lights come on. It will not turn over. I'll turn the alarm off, turn the alarm back on, put it in gear, take it out of gear, and then I'll start it. And it, it doesn't matter if it's hot or it's cold. Sometimes it'll start, sometimes it, it won't. I've taken it to three different shops, and they cannot replicate it. How ma- how often does it happen? Is it every day? Um, let's see. It started happening in August. We drove from Arizona to, uh, to Austin, Texas. All in one trip, stopped about three times. By the time we got to San Antonio, it just wouldn't start. We thought it was a battery. Turn the alarm on and off, and now it's happening more frequently. Okay. We're going to get back to you when we come back from the break. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Calling all golfers, scratch, duffers, sandbaggers, and every skill level in between. This is your chance to win $1 million. Come out to the Wells Fargo Fiesta Bowl Million Dollar Hole in One at the Arizona Biltmore Golf Club, November 3rd through the 13th. Here's how it works. Purchase a bag of 11 balls for $10 and hit as many balls as you want. 20 prizes will be awarded daily with the finals on Sunday, November 13th. Fiesta Bowl, creating champions on and off the field. For more information, please visit FiestaBowl.org. In life. There are certain relationships outside of family and friends that are important. For instance, if your car breaks down, you want to have a relationship with an auto repair shop that you trust to repair your car. The same goes for your doctor, your accountant, and your attorney. Why? Because the services they provide involve health and financial decisions, and it's important to hire a trusted professional. This same principle applies to real estate. Hi, I'm Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. For most of us, our home is the largest financial commitment and asset we will own in our lifetime. So when you decide to sell, it's important to hire a professional, knowledgeable real estate agent that you can trust to represent your interests and provide the best customer service available. If you would like a consultation to help determine the value and discuss a comprehensive marketing plan to sell your home, please visit my website at lisareneehenry.com. That's Lisa Renee, R-E-N-E-E, Henry.com. Come experience the difference a great real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR, on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com, and streaming live on the KTAR News app, your breaking news and traffic, now. 
KTAR News Time 1130. Good morning, I'm Mike Sackley. President Obama is talking trade in South America. He's meeting today with the presidents of China and Peru. On this, his final foreign trip, President Obama is in Lima, Peru this weekend, attending the APEC summit. Many in the international community are looking to President Obama to explain how Trump's election will impact critical issues like trade and climate change. President Obama will conclude his trip on Sunday and return back to the U.S. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, Lima, Peru. Well, President-elect Donald Trump and Vice President-elect Mike Pence are at Trump's golf course in New Jersey for a day of meetings. The agenda includes meeting with 2012 Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney, who was an outspoken critic of Trump throughout the election. The nation's most advanced weather satellite is scheduled to be launched today. Two dozen meteorologists from around the country are expected to be on hand for the sunset launch from Cape Canaveral. The billion-dollar satellite will aim for a 22,300-mile-high orbit. Well, it will churn out the sharpest and fastest pictures yet of hurricanes, tornadoes, and other U.S. weather. And now let's get a check on traffic in the RMEGold.com Traffic Center. Here's Mike Daniels. Well, thanks, Mike. We do have that crash with, uh, cleared. Uh, they've done a 17 to watch out for there. Also, uh, it's Camelback Road. you got the work, road work going on there. Eastbound between 24th and 26th Street is closed. You can always use Lincoln uh, in, or Indiana School to get around that. And more. Well, we're continuing on Gilbert Road, both directions at Elliott. Expect some minor delays in that area. This report brought to you by Trajan Wealth. Annuities aren't right for everyone. How do you know if they're right for you? Well, just text the word retire to 411-923 to learn more. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Sunny skies for your Saturday, up to a high of 83. Partly cloudy tonight, a low of 59, and sun and clouds tomorrow with a high of 80. Right now it's Scottsdale 76, weather brought to you by Howard Air. Matt and Dave, KTAR's car guys on Bumper to Bumper, are back with you next. I'm Mike Sackley on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Well, welcome back to the second half of Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, along with Dave Riccio, and uh, we're helping your car questions. You know, that that song was a perfect uh, prelude into this next segment. We're going to get back to Laura with her question. We've got Sue, Chad, and Brandy hanging on the line, too, but... The Beach Boys, a little Deuce Coop. You know, I was going to the gym yesterday morning before work, up early, and all of a sudden I'm, I see these a nice Chevy. I'm like, well, that's a cool hot rod. And there's someone little sitting in the front seat. I'm like, man, that's a that is a cool car if you're a kid getting dropped off to school in that thing. You know, big scoop sticking out of the hood and stuff. And I get next to it because I want to look at it. It's an older guy and a gal. They're all dressed up nice. And I see another one. And I'm like, oh, good guys. The cars are out on the road. Early Friday morning, getting up there to Good Guys. And so we're going to take a quick trip to Good Guys. And we've got Betsy Bennett on the line. She's out there at the show up there at Westworld. Betsy, how are we doing today? Hey, we're doing great. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. Good. Yeah, we're having an amazing time out here at Westworld today. Well, the weatherman delivered for you, I see, right? Wow. I, yes, the weather has been, like, so perfect. The temperature is great. There's a nice little breeze. Lots and lots of cars. We have... Right at 3,000 cars right now, so it's pretty beautiful out here today. Well, and, you know, we had a little session last week. We talked about what was going on and, and yeah. a little little uh, prelude into the show and, and all the mm-hmm. autocross and everything happening out there. So for the benefit of the people that weren't listening and anybody else that's listening that's looking for something fun to do this weekend, give us a quick rundown. Sure. So we are out here at Westworld. And we're doing the 19th Southwest Nationals, which is our season finale for the 2016 calendar year. So this is our last event of the year. Um, There's about 3,000 hot rods, like I said, customs and classic cars on display. We've got the autocross in the desert that's going to start up this afternoon at 1. So the 32-car field has been qualified, and they are working on the ladder right now. So that will be going on this afternoon. We've got the Nitro Thunderfest cars ready to fire up. So lots of really cool Great things to see and do out here. A lot of food booths, a lot of cool vendor displays. Just It's a packed house today at Westworld. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. 
you know, I know I'm going to head up there after the show today. Hopefully, get up there by one o'clock. And there's, I mean, there's just all that stuff going on. So Carrie keeps texting me pictures. Carrie, who helps us with the show, is like, yeah, oh, look no, at this I one. ran into Carrie. And he was like, I'm drooling. I don't even know where to start. You're <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, he's, he's got a handkerchief because it's just running on his face. Yeah, he's probably gonna, I know. Got it ringing out. And you know, like I, I always say, you don't have to be the car nut fanatic to go out there. I mean. There's hot rods, like you say, hot rods, customs, classics. But there's right. just the cool car that your parents had when you were a kid. That I mean, my oh, kids yeah. like to go out there and see this stuff, the paint job. Yeah. There's just something for everybody. It's fun, fun stuff. It really is. There's a lot of fun things out here. A lot of fun for the kids, too. We've got a cool kids area going on. We've got face painting and all kinds of activities and crafts for them to do. And there's just a lot of cars. I mean, there's just you can walk and walk and walk and see everything you could ever imagine out here. There's some amazing cars for sure. Very good. And that's at Westworld. It's going on until how long today, and what are the hours? We're tomorrow? here until uh, we're here until five o'clock today, and then tomorrow we're here eight to three. And for people who are interested in the award ceremony, we have that at two twenty-two tomorrow afternoon. So lots of lots of fun still to be had at Westworld. Okay. Well, Betsy, thanks for giving us the rundown again. Have yeah. fun out there. The weather's great. We're looking forward to seeing you a little later. Thank you so much. You you're, guys have a great one. You're welcome. Hey, and, you know, before we took the break, we had Laura on the line talking about her car not starting. And and uh, I don't know that we need to bring her back in, Dave. She's on the, on the line on hold still and listening. But, you know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, she's moving the transmission shifter. Uh, doing some different stuff, and then, but really nothing, and it's happening. I, I think I have an idea what you're thinking, but what would you be looking at? A park neutral switch, or, or yeah, a there's I mean, switch? <clears throat> there's a lot of things when you start your car that happen. But you know, I I, I would want to know is it no click, nothing's happening. I think she doesn't even have lights coming on, so that makes me think something else is maybe going on. But, yeah, moving the transmission may trip the neutral safety switch. And what I was going to say, too, before she started talking about moving the shifter, a lot of these GM cars have two positive battery cables. And and one may go right down to the starter, and then one feeds the power accessories. And there's a lead lug in between the two to make a contact. Oftentimes we see corrosion or looseness just on that positive battery cable, and that will cause a problem similar to that. So you may want to check your battery connections. That's something a lot of people can do at home, or, or uh, you know, just be careful. Make sure you're doing them in the right order, not not you know doing the taking the negative off first and putting it on last, and and those things can can help you save a little bit of money. Sometimes you can just wiggle the the wire and embed it a little bit deeper. So, Laura, good luck with that. And if you're looking for a shop to do that, try bumper to bumper radio.com and down there in Chandler, you have ADS. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Roger Bland with the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Association, ATRA. As a transmission industry advocate, I travel throughout North America, studying transmission shops, looking for the best of the best that our industry has to offer. Professionally, ethically run shops that are proud to display the ATRA logo. I was recently in Arizona because I had heard from more than one source that I had to check out Tri-City Transmission right here in Tempe. Folks, I've been in the transmission industry for over 25 years, and I'm here to tell you that Tri-City is the type of transmission shop we're proud to call an ATRA member. Not only does Tri-City Transmission meet the stringent code of ethics set forth for every member of the association, they also have an extraordinary approach to solving their customers' problems. You see, they don't just focus on what it is they produce, transmissions. Their true concern is about fixing your problem. And take it from me, that's a big difference. To learn more about Tri-City Transmission, find them at TriCityTransmission.com. That's TriCityTransmission.com. Get ready for the Good Guys 19th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 18th to the 20th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 3,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and classics on display. Put your car and driving skills to the test in the Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition. And earn a shot to compete in the Duel in the Desert Autocross Shootout Final. Plus, bring out those late models on Sunday for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration. Open to all years of American-made or powered vehicle. For Tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper-to-bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASE Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Few 
cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we've got Chad and Brandy on the line and more open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Whether you've got an intermittent weird noise in your car, maybe it's a weird vibration, something going on, and you want to talk through it because you've been ignoring it because you're like, maybe it'll just go away if I close my eyes, uh, but it needs to go to the shop. Give us a call. Maybe we can help walk you through that. Well, Matt, we got to get to Chad. He's got a 2010 Mazda 3. How can I help you, Chad? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, Matt and Dave. Great to be on the program. I just uh, had a, just a general question, uh, transmission question. I had always heard um, and read online that if your transmission is not messing up or it's not causing you any issues, there's no need to really get the oil changed. Um, ever since I had my car, it's a brand-new car, and I've never changed the transmission oil. So, and based off of the rumors that I've heard of that, I'm kind of skeptical to ever get it changed because I'm not experiencing any issues with my transmission. So I just wanted to get you guys a thought on that. Is it an automatic or manual? It can be both. Okay, but it is, it's generally, an, it's an automatic that you can, you can shift through the gears if you want to. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's no clutch pedal. No clutch pedal. Yes. No, there's not. Okay. Well, I would say on that, yes, there is a lot of information about don't service your transmission if it's not messing up. Uh, and, uh, and I know where that comes from, A, because people, people in the past, when they have a transmission problem, they're thinking, well, I'll just go in and get the transmission serviced, which is changing the oil in the transmission, and, and hopefully it'll go away. I'll just kind of kind of cross like, my fingers. It's like getting your teeth clean for a tooth ache. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work. It's, it's, it's not going to work. So what happens, they go in for a service, and they get it serviced, and then the transmission fails. Well, it was failing anyway when they went in or it already had a problem. So, but if they would have gone in and I've got an issue, I need to get it fixed. So that's created a kind of a rumor or reputation for transmission service. The other thing that's really come up is there's a lot of people that service transmissions that shouldn't be servicing transmissions, so people end up with issues. I mean, a, a bad transmission service is much worse than no service at all. But eventually that oil does wear out and it does need to be changed, and, and I, I definitely would recommend transmission service, a proper one. Somewhere on that car, I'd say between thirty and 50,000 miles. Yeah, this is a, it definitely is, is a good idea. But it's not – I don't know if a car wash is the place to go, you know, uh, to get that done. I mean, and I know they offer that at the car wash. But there's there's a 100 different ways to service a transmission. It's a, it's 100 different things to 10 different technicians. They all – some people put a straw down the dipstick hole, and they suck the fluid out. They suck out three quarts, and they pour three quarts back in. I don't know if that's what I like, you know. No, it's not. And that's typically the, the least expensive one. And they do that because – you know, at my shop, we might say transmission service is 300 bucks. Hmm. Well, then, but there's no definition of that. So then they call the next place, it's 120. They think they're getting something for 300, 120 that was otherwise 300, and that's not the case. But I want to back up a little bit on, you know, I went to a, a class or a seminar, maybe a sales deal. I'm not quite sure what it was, put on by one of the oil companies here the other day. And... Um, Talked about the different motor oils and transmission fluids and, and what's happening in the industry. And the, and this engineer for the oil company stands up there and he says, and you know what? With these new transmissions, the fluid's so important to be the right fill because they're sealed from the factory and they don't need to change them and you can't even check the level. I said, whoa, yeah. time out, dude. <laughs> time out. You – are perpetuating this false information. Right. Now, if you want to say the average consumer cannot check the oil, that is absolutely 100 correct. But the notion that you can't check the fluid level and that it's sealed and you don't ever change it, that is so far from the truth and such the worst bad the bad advice that you could ever get. Yeah, no, it's so. it's it's uh, it keep it's the sealed transmission thing. They took the dipsticks away on these cars because they didn't want the common consumer pouring anything in because there's bad additives out there that someone might pour in a transmission and the 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 warranty lengths got longer. There's a whole it's a big long complicated answer, but I would say service it. We got to get to Brandy in Tempe. She's got a 2001 Nissan Pathfinder. How can we help you, Brandy? You're on bumper to bumper radio. 
Okay, guys, thanks for taking my call. I'm going to be quick. I have, um, I can, I'm, my lunch break's almost over, but I'll be able to listen. I won't be able to talk. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> um, I have a wobble. My, once I hit about 50 miles an hour, a little bit over 50 miles before 55, my car will start to wobble side to side. I have to come off the gas and it will stop. Sometimes if I, when I, start to accelerate again, it will start again. Sometimes it doesn't, and I'll just have to keep repeating. I have had two mechanics look at it. One has told me it's the controlled, the con carrier. Carrier bearing? Arm, carrier bearing, and then the other has said a control arm, but they both weren't sure. Before I put the money, because they're both speaking a lot of money, how do I get more of a definitive answer? Like, you know, that's a tough one because you might have two, I mean, both of those things in extreme circumstances, Dave, wouldn't you agree, can cause that 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 shake? I, I was going to ask if you feel it in the seat of your pants or in the steering wheel, but I'm thinking two. I'm thinking two different possibilities. We have the thing called the death wobble. You think mm -hmm. about that on Jeeps, and when the front end gets out of alignment, or specifically the caster of the alignment, one of the one of the alignment angles, look at your caster wheel in the grocery store in the shopping cart. You start going fast. What's that thing start doing if it's not attached right? It's shaking like crazy. Right. So that you could have that, and, and maybe they're seeing worn out control arm bushings, or missing, or completely damaged control arm bushings, and it's a very likely repair. But the question is, is it going to solve the problem. You want to address the drive shaft? Well, I mean, I don't think the drive shaft is causing kind of a wobble like you're, side you're side. thinking. So carrier bearing is one thing. But I do think it's in the tires or in the front end. There's something going on there. And uh, it's it's one of those things because you're asking, well, where do I, you know, where do I put the money first to get this thing fixed? Because I can't be driving a car that's wobbling like that. And uh, it's harder on an older car. This car is, you know, 15, 16 years old. There's a lot of cumulative wear that adds up. But I'd be go looking for those control arm bushings if they're missing or broken or damaged. I mean, that's that's going to be a good starting place. And if you're going to two different, I mean, it sounds like you went to two different mechanics and got two different answers. I don't know if you have a, ra are you an orphan type of thing? Do you, do you really have that one guy that you go to or, or, or not? So I think you need to decide which one of those or just start from scratch again. Go to bumper to bumper radio dot com. Find a shop. And whether you go to one of those guys or go back to one of the guys you chose, Take them back and say, I know you said it was the control arms, but Joe Blow said it was the drive shaft. I'm here to have you fix the car, but help, help me walk through this. What do you think about what he says, and let's talk it out. Could it could very well be both based on the description. I'm going with the control arms, though. I am, too. So we're gonna, we've got Kevin and Ruben and time for maybe a, a couple more at 602-277-5827. We'll be right back. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. 
Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. All righty. We are back helping you with your car just like we do every single Saturday from 11 to noon. I'm Matt Allen. He's Dave Ricci- Riccio. Riccio. Get Riccio. that right, buddy. Get that Riccio right. So, hey, Brandy was just uh, calling. She had her... Her uh, car with a vibration, you know, someone said maybe a drive shaft, someone said maybe in the front end. She's in Tempe. If you're in Tempe, Tri-City Transmission can take care of all those things for you. Uh, maybe it ends up it's in the transmission. If that's the case, you want to be at the transmission shop or or someone that takes care of the drive line and that part of the, of the car. So you can also find Tri-City Transmission at bumper to bumper radiocom if you're looking and there's a list of great, all kinds of great shops there. And we were, you, you mentioned orphan customers, Matt. In other words, they go a lot of different places to get their car serviced. You want to find a shop that you can get a relationship with because, you know, chances are you're going to have a car for a long time. And they need to be someone that you trust and you feel comfortable with. And it also kind of goes both ways. Hey, this customer, really easy to work with or, you know, we're comfortable. You tend to get more at the auto shop when you work that way, when the auto shop has a good feeling for you. So you want to, we want to be a good shop. You want to be a good customer. Mutually beneficial. And then, you know, for like this weekend, it's Thanksgiving. If you have a regular pattern established at your repair shop, you can jump in that car with confidence, know that you can just go out of town. You know, some, if you're just bouncing around, maybe things aren't getting taken care of. And, mm-hmm. you know, if that's the case, there's not much time left. Let Please don't wait till Wednesday to get your car into the shop to, to make sure it's good <laughs> to head over the river and through the woods. Uh, maybe even consider renting a car for the weekend. Well, we're going to go with Kevin in Phoenix. He's got a 2007 FJ. How can we help you, Kevin? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, how you guys doing? Great. Good. Um, yeah, every time I go over, like, a speed bump, uh, the front end clicks. Um, I've replaced the upper control arms, lower control arms, outer tie rods, uh, wheel bearing hub assemblies. Uh, I got new shocks, um, but it still clicks. I took it in for an alignment, too, and they said they everything under there was fine. Um, but within a week after of the alignment, you know, it was clicking pretty good. So I went up underneath there and noticed that one of the lower control arm bolts was a little loose. So I tightened all that down, went back through, tightened up everything. But it still clicks when I go over a speed bump. How many miles is on this FJ? Oh, um, he, uh, round numbers. 129,000. Okay. You know what I like to do on front end stuff? Dave, I don't know if you were going to go somewhere. What I didn't hear was the sway bar links. I know, sway bar links. Click, click. click seen click. that a few times. Uh, actually, yeah, I did. I replaced the bushings and the sway bar links. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, let's see. You've covered it all, so um, you know what? Something else. I had a customer who was just driven crazy by this weird pop noise that he had in his car. So he literally took his GoPro and mounted it underneath the suspension and drove it around, so maybe he could see what was making that noise. And once right. in a while, yeah, once in a while in the noise business, uh, stuff like that's got to happen. I know what I like to do is, you know, we put them on the drive-on lift, you know, so the tires aren't hanging. And we just, somebody grabs on the bumper and just shakes the thing up and down. Jounce it. And yeah, jump. well, somebody's looking at it, and you should be able to find that, that clicking noise. I mean, that's that's how I see it happening. Uh, and then, it, again, well, it's over speed bumps, so you have to think about what's moving. I would I would still, well, <laughs> uh, I, he already did the sway bar links. I would still consider disconnecting, take, re, completely removing one sway bar link or both of them, and just eliminate that from the... Right, from, uh, from, from the possibilities and, and see if it's doing it then. I mean, you, you've named all the hard, all the big parts. I mean, control arm bushings typically don't make noise. I mean, it's yeah, and it's, that's it's a tough. One. I had this lady with this Axle. Toyota where it was it was her actual transmission mount was popping. Mm-hmm. You know, when she would go over bumps, and it, you would never see that. But until you get underneath that car, we can look up at it and just start tugging on things. And that's how we found it. I mean, and just go around everything with a pry bar and see if you can move it, see what happens. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how it's going to be figured out. And if, if you got a GoPro, stick it under there. And, and then we've got this. You know, we've got these chassis ears. We've got a computer box, and we've got six or eight different transponders. We go and attach it different areas on the car, and we can listen while we're driving to those components, too. Well, good luck with that, Kevin. We're going to go with Ruben in Phoenix. He's got a Chevy Blazer. How can we help you, Ruben? You're on Bumper to Bumper. Hey, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Yeah, I have a 2000 yeah, 2000 Blazer. Uh, my challenge is when I'm driving it, especially if I just drive straight, 
at about 35, 40 miles per hour, I start hearing a humming sound. I, I thought it was my tires, but uh, it isn't. And I could feel it in my steering wheel. Hmm. It's a 4x4, four four, so I'm thinking it might be the bearings, but I'm still guessing. You ever yeah. watch much racing on television? Me? No. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're... <laughs> The reason I ask is, you know, the way we try and find wheel bearing noise, for example, is, and I, the reason I ask if you watch when it's racing, when they're trying to clean the tires off before they get the green flag in, they're swerving left to right. They're keeping the tires warm. And they're scrubbing off all the all the dirt. But what you do when you turn the car to the right, all the weight shifts to the left, and you preload the left side bearings. And when you swerve to the left, you shift all the weight to the right, and you load the right side bearings. So in your neighborhood or in the mall parking lot when there's nobody in there, go 15, 25 miles an hour or whatever and just kind of do some lazy swerving. And you'll bring it back. You can correct it back a little bit hard and see if you can affect the noise that way. I think you got to go faster, 35 to 45. That's my call. Okay. Either way, <laughs> just don't flip that sucker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a huge bank. The only problem with that doesn't work is if both wheel bearings are bad, and I've ran into that once or twice. <laughs> yeah. But, but if also what we do is, you know, we'll jack up one wheel and just tug, tug on the wheel, you know, from the, put your one hand on the top at 12 o'clock and one hand on the bottom at 6 o'clock and just move it in and out and see if there's extra movement there, you know. But I think you're kind of on the right track with the wheel bearings. We got to get to Beverly real quick. She's in Scottsdale with an 07 Saturn Aurora. How can we help you, Beverly? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, yes. Last week, um, I started having uh, the message come up, service airbag on my car, but it's not on all the time, and sometimes I can go on a trip, and it never comes on, and other times it'll come on. It's usually It usually comes on when I start the car. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, do you want to go, oh, Dave? Was, what I was going to say is when the service airbag light comes on, it basically there's a module or a computer that runs that airbag system. So there's sensors that are going to trip off if you're in an accident, and then the airbags themselves, and there's also sensors in the seat and in the seat belt and all kinds of things that have to go on to make that airbag system function properly. And if any one of them is not working right, you're going to get a service airbag light. And so what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to take it to an auto shop where they can scan the airbag module to see what the air is. And that that air. scan is not going to tell them exactly what's wrong. It's at least point them in the direction, like maybe we have a seatbelt switch problem or something like that. Yeah, and you know what? With I was going to say with the number of airbag recalls and stuff that there are going on right now, uh, you could call the dealer, give them your VIN number, and ask them if this car is under recall. That may or may not encompass the repair. If it's not under recall, then you know find your shop at bumper to bumper radio.com if you don't have one. Get in there. There's all. It could be a clock spring, even Dave. That's the the winding inside the uh, the steering wheel to keep the wires connected to the airbag while you're turning. So, no. You know, I know this is Saturn. What dealership does she call for that? Ooh, my goodness. Probably a Chevrolet. Uh, GM dealership, or you know what? Call Virginia Auto Service at Tri or Tri City Transmission. Call one of us, or send an email to the bumper to bumper radio.com, and we'll try and help you there if we can. We'll see you next week.